I think one of the funnest things about reading Spurgeon is that it allows me to practice my enunciation and articulation so that I can get the King Jamieation in exactly the right syllable. No, but seriously, there's a lot to be said for the way we arrange our speech and our patterns of conduct in a way, in a format that is honorable and less guttural like some of our street language and colloquialisms are now. People, some people actually enjoy just simply mouthing off and being sarcastic and I tend to look at the way that in olden days, when you presented yourself before a court and the way that you conducted yourself, your countenance even, the face and the way that you held your shoulders and squared your back and the way that you were arranging the words with the inflections and the style with which you presented them, I like that. I think that that's probably what we're going to see more of in heaven. And perhaps in the millennium when Jesus rules on the earth, we may be aware of that and it may not sound like King James version <laughs> or English who knows we don't know but wouldn't it be better if we did choose to select our words properly and conduct ourselves with manner and etiquette as much of Spurgeon does in his writings why not I think that if we did, <laughs> we might get along better with each other. But God speaks on his own terms, and he doesn't ask us to interpret him. He just says, listen, we live unto the Lord. If God had willed it, each of us might have entered heaven at the moment of conversion. It was not absolutely necessary for our preparation for immortality that we should tarry here. It is possible for a man to be taken to heaven and to be found meet to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light, though he has but just believed in Jesus. It is true that our sanctification is a long and continued process and we shall not be perfected till we lay aside our bodies and enter within the veil. But nevertheless, had the Lord so willed it, he might have changed us from imperfection to perfection and have taken us to heaven at once. Why then are we here? Would God keep his children out of paradise a single moment longer than was necessary? Why is the army of the living God still on the battlefield when one charge might have given them the victory? Why? Are his children still wandering hither and thither through a maze when a solitary word from his lips would bring them to the center of their hopes in heaven? The answer is here. They are here that they may live unto the Lord and may bring others to know his love. We remain on earth as sowers to scatter good seed, as plowmen to break up the fallow ground, as heralds publishing salvation. We are here as the salt of the earth, to be a blessing to the world. We are here to glorify Christ in our daily life. We are here as workers for him and as workers together with him. Let us see that our life answereth its end. Let us live earnest, useful, holy lives to the praise of the glory of his grace. Meanwhile, we long to be with him and we daily sing, my heart is with him on his throne, and ill can brook delay. Each moment listening for the voice, rise up and come away. A lot of times people find themselves more content to remain than it is to leave. I know, especially in praying for loved ones, that I find that I am the exception when I ask a person if they ask me for prayer for healing I usually ask well what do you want me to pray 
and they look at me as though I'm insane, as though, of course I want them healed. And I've asked, well, is that what the Lord wants? I mean, if God wants someone to remain, great. But what if God wants someone to go home? <laughs> then you got the right person to ask to pray. That's me. Because <laughs> personally, I can't imagine having anyone hang around any longer than they have to. Why? Except that it be the Lord's will that none should perish and perhaps and maybe in some way in some form that you being stuck around here on this earth as long as I'm stuck around here on this earth we might share the word as well as the life that God is living in us and be unto someone else that Jesus they need to see today you could be that person Today you can realize that it's not just about you, but it's about all that you come into contact to, especially those who do not know Jesus. Oh, it's nice to see the body of Christ grow and develop and become mature, but how much more so isn't it greater glory to God to save a soul from hell than to just simply watch his children grow up? Today, whatever it is that God sends your way, I pray that he would always keep you in the center of his love, continually working with you by the sweat of his own brow and holding you in the palms of his hands so that wherever you go and whatever you do, you know that you are his.